the uh, um, hopefully we don't have an issue with recording limits on time. Uh, Shamai, welcome. Uh, today we've got a very interesting guest. I'm doing this is a start of a new series of shows called uh, Laps BTC uh, IoT Laps, and we're going to be looking at some of the Lightning apps which are being developed because um, there's some fantastic projects and I struggle to keep up and it's a good way for me myself just to get more insight on, on um, how some of these apps will perhaps work and uh, some of their use cases. So I thought it'd be a cool idea to try and get uh, the developers of some of these new um, uh, Lightning apps which are out there and which are emerging uh, and just uh, have a little interview with them and ask them the motivation behind why they've made, what they're made and, uh, and so on. So to start the, the series, uh, we've got Ross. Um, at uh, babe underscore code b-a-e-b-b -B on twitter um, and he's got a, um, a website which he's developed called ln gifts uh, so ross if you want to explain to people what ln gifts is that'd be cool yeah sure uh lightning gifts i made lightning gifts about a month ago a little bit more uh, to solve the problem of being able to gift btc over the lightning network to people who don't uh who might not already have a lightning invoice for you to pay uh, and that's one of the problems with Lightning Network right now is you can't uh, send money to someone unless they first create an invoice. Um, that might be solved in future things like uh, Key Send or Sphinx Send, as it might be known. But even then, uh, sometimes you just want to be able to give someone some BTC, a small amount of BTC even, and that they can redeem after they've set up their own Lightning wallet. Uh, using Lightning Gifts, what you can do is you can create a gift, uh, pay that invoice for that gift, um, using Lightning. That'll then create a unique URL, which you can then give to your recipient. And then your recipient can then redeem that gift at their own leisure after they've got their Lightning wallet and some inbound liquidity. That's cool, man. Um, would it be possible to get like a, a little demo, do you think, of the, the process? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Let me fire it up. Uh, all right. So I'm going to share my screen. Cool. Uh, that's our website, uh, lightning.gifts. So I'm going to create one gift and I'm going to create it using one wallet. And then I'm going to redeem it using a different wallet and I can use QR codes. So I'm going to use my mobile wallets because um, I've put the effort of making uh, QR codes on this website. So I may as well utilize it. Um, we're going to create a pretty small gift, just one of 333 sats. And that will generate us an invoice, which I'm gonna scan on Blue Wallet. Let's see if I can race you and scan it first, but I haven't got my, haven't got my wallet up, you're gonna beat me. Yeah, got it, done. Okay, so payment should have gone through. Uh, yep, so that's been paid now. Now what we've got is we've got a URL to view our gift or we've got a QR code that we can copy and paste and That's give sweet. to our recipient or we, a URL that we can copy and pass to them over SMS or any other messaging. So we're gonna view that gift. Now that we're viewing that gift, we have two ways to redeem it. Um, what we can do is we can create a invoice 333 sats to redeem the gift or if you have an ln url compatible wallet like uh, lntx bot or uh, lightning bitcoin lightning wallet the android application which is the oldest um, android lightning wallet yeah the first one you can scan this qr code and it will perform the withdrawal automatically or it will create a prompt for you to do the withdrawal without having to create an invoice and then paste it in. Wow, that's sweet. I mean, I saw I saw something similar. Um, the uh, Bit Refill guy showed me something similar in um, I think it was Bit Refill, the the Thor thing, um, mm. uh, and that was pretty cool. But it was like for set amounts, and it's for quite large amounts too. So I think like the cool thing about this is it's it's for really quite small amounts. How do you how do you do that then without? So are you are you're not um, uh, uh, making any money on this? It's kind of an automated service, is it? Or mm, yeah, I'm using the Open Node API. Um, and because they aren't charging any fees to me for transferring and sending uh, or creating the gifts and sending the gifts and creating the gifts, then it doesn't feel like I need to charge the recipients. It's more just a service for the Lightning community, I guess, to onboard 
you use us for lightning that's nice man yeah it's such a such a, i mean to be honest i would have found that really useful you know when i go to conferences and i've got and there's some arcade machine set up or something and i want to be able to give people a little bit of bitcoin to be able to print out a whole bunch of these qrs and, and people could go to them and redeem bitcoin that'd be pretty useful um yeah so, exactly so i i i've i when we were speaking off air, you said something about um, some recent updates you've made. So you were using something called LNURL. Do you want to yeah, go to LNURL and how that works? Because that sounds pretty dope. LNURL, uh, it's a really cool spe new spec. Um, it's a BEC32 encoded URL. Um, and what that does is that if your wallet supports it, then you can scan a QR code to perform things like opening a channel with a new node. So for example, if you know Lightning Big, LN Big, uh, and you want to get some inbound liquidity uh, with LN Big, with one of the LN Big nodes, then you can go to the LN Big website uh, and request inbound liquidity and it'll display a QR code just like the one on LN GIFs. If your, light white, if your Lightning Wallet supports uh, LN URL, you can just scan that URL and it'll go through the process of opening a channel or creating a connection to that node then opening a channel to that node for the exact amount without you having to enter in any of the details manually. Wow. And in my usage of it, it enables me to create an LN URL that when it's scanned by a Lightning with an LN URL compatible wallet, uh, it'll automatically make a withdrawal invoice that the use of the Kaninja Prips okay on to redeem their Lightning gift. Wow, that's cool. Um, yeah, I wish I could show it to you on the phone, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> What's that? Oh, the actual LN URL thing. No, it'd be, it'd be too, probably too fiddly, fiddly to demo. Um, if you yeah. were, have you got anything else to share on the um, on the on the screen there? Or it'd be quite cool to kind of look in the, the back end. I don't know if you're able to like. Oh, the code base. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is uh, that right? Let me just. Yeah, yeah. We'll cool. dig that up. Um, I don't know if I'm sharing that right now. So Without I'll... doxing yourself. That's the trick. Yeah, one second. Let me stop sharing that and then I'll share uh, this one. Yeah, this one. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it, man. Okay, yeah. So this is the node backend for uh, Lightning Gifts. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty messy, don't judge. Oh, this is not the back end. My bad. This is the front end. <laughs> One second, let me uh, get you set up with the back. So you're using node.js for me? Yeah, I'm a big JavaScript guy. Uh, Nothing so, wrong with that, man. They get too much too much um, bad rap in this in this space. Yeah, I mean, it's good just to use what you're comfortable with, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, lightning after all this application layer, so we can be a little bit more reckless with our code, can't we? Yeah, I mean, it's with the way serverless functions are going, and so that I think it's more... And I, and I guess the way, the ease of using with learning JavaScript and other programming languages, I think more Absolutely. services will be built on JavaScript than other code Oh, it's it popular. Well, yeah, it's very head in the sand and claim that everyone should just use uh, C, you know, is it's nuts. Uh, so yeah, this is the code base. Uh, it's only four files uh, with an N file that I'm not gonna show you. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the dependencies we utilize. Yeah. Um, we're using Firebase for a, our database. We're using Sentry for error tracking, Axios to make requests to the Open Node API. That library, BEC32, is what we use to encode the LN URLs that we send to the front end. Uh, cause, crypto, random string, that just generates a random number, dot env, other stuff, Express, Firebase, Lodash, and Nodemon. Um, that's our dependencies. Uh, yeah, what else? Uh, this is our interactions with the Open Node API. Okay, so easy to sort of get and post requests. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Um, oh, yeah, so you're using the webhook thing to tell you when it's been paid as opposed to. Yeah, yeah. Webhooks are pretty good. Uh, webhooks, highly recommend them. The open node guys highly recommend them. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not it's a good way. me. I'm constantly spamming them with uh, with uh, requests to see whether invoices have been paid. I'm not sure yeah. how to do a webhook on a, like a point of sale terminal, though. I know it's, it's a bit easier on a website, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit easier when the, when the well, this is an express server hosted yeah. on Heroku, so it's always up, right? Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I was previously, I was doing exactly what you were doing. I was just querying it like every five or three seconds. And uh, they, I spoke to, the, I'm actually like, in, during the development of this, I was speaking to the open node help support guys. And that's like a direct link to the developers, right? Yeah. And they were sort of, and they were looking at, and I was sort of telling them how I was doing stuff. And they're like, yeah, you know, you could just use webhooks. We made it. So why don't you use it kind of thing instead of querying our servers every five seconds. Yeah, yeah, I guess I could. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. They're super cool guys, aren't they? I mean, like, I found them incredibly helpful developing my Yes. Stuff. Have any questions? Yeah. You know, big shout out to them. Um, yeah, big shout out to the UL. And, had a similar uh, experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good vibes from those guys. I hope I can meet them at the lightning conference. Oh, you're coming. You should, you should come. Yeah. You need to come. Yep. Uh, I've got the it's ticket. Book Japan, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, you say that, but man, I was, I actually got a killer deal on a ticket the other day uh, yeah. with one of those Chinese airlines. I'll tell you about it some other time. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. yeah we'll go into detail. Um, so yeah, this is the part where we interact with the open node stuff. It's all modularized, so we then import that to our, our index.js, which is where the sort of business logic happens. Yeah. And the error codes. Um, this is the implementation that I'm the high, part that I'm highlighting is the implementation of Ellen URL. It's yeah. got its own uh, sort of syntax that you got to adhere to a little bit. Um, but I had a little bit of help from the uh, Anton and Fiat Jaff, the guys behind LNU, the LNURL spec. Wow. Um, Anton's the guy that did uh, BLW, the original uh, Bitcoin Lightning wallet. So it's his sort of uh, idea, I guess, the LNURL. Nice. Um, yeah, I find this myself as well. Like a lot of my um, projects and, and code, it's just, it's, it's um, a patchwork of, of other people's input. You know, there's such a friendly, I mean, for anyone who, who hasn't, out there who wants to develop something or try developing something even if you haven't got that much experience there's so many people out there willing to help you particularly if you go to conferences and chats people and you, you show willing then there's so many people willing to give you a helping hand you mentioned something about alex bosworth being quite helpful as well oh uh, yeah yeah alex bosworth was a big help uh from just like during building the application he i was able to talk to him on slack uh after i released the application um he was friendly to help me debugging like a rug that i had in production and I was, I was pretty panicked at the time and he was like well maybe you could just do this and I was like, oh well, cool that completely solves the problem thanks dude <laughs> really helpful guy uh he's asked is he i've even had like weird questions about how to like the optimal way of setting up a lightning node on aws and he's yeah. very knowledgeable about that as well really helpful guy big shout out to him yeah, you can see why these like why he, why he is Alex Bosworth, isn't it? Some some of these sorts of people, you throw them a question and they just throw you about the perfect answer. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely query him, or maybe he might make a guide one day about how to get the uh, optimal lightning node set up on AWS. Yeah, man, that's a good. That sounds pretty good. I could do a tutorial on that as well. We should collaborate on that one. That'd be good. Yeah, he'll you can do it prune, pruned testnet. He'll recommend testnet. Um, I don't, I don't do testnet. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, use, you could use LNURL to make so um, on my point of sales devices mm -hmm. somebody could say go into the bar for example um, and they want to get some lightning they could give the the merchant I don't know 10 pounds and then the merchant could then just generate an LNURL QR code -y thing mm -hmm. and then um, the customer could then instantly redeem that as, as lightning balance is that right? Yeah, yeah. They could redeem that. Wow, uh, it's like a cashback. If, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool like that. Um, I could do a um, an ATM as well, like a little ATM. That'd be useful. People could put coins in and then get. Um... So, have you got like an API? Would Would you plug into LNURL directly, or would I? Could I? If you got an API for your service for Lightning Gifts? So Lightning Gifts has its own API. Um, wow. That's. Uh, if you're interested in implementing lightning gifts, the creation or the redemption of lightning gifts, there's a form uh, for API access on the website. Uh, it's going to fill in some details in there and I'll be happy to give API access and uh, help anyone that wants to utilize it. So could, um, I, could I use that to make my lightning ATM? Yeah. 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 <sighs> totally help. Really. That'd be really cool to collaborate with you on that. Yeah. Nice. I've even got like a little coin machine I could use, you know, for like um, people could put their euros in get some lightning out of that's great um uh lightning and bitcoin bitcoin on lightning shall i say unicast mm. uh so so 
can we have a little bit of background like on you and like how so what what got you into kind of working on bit because obviously bitcoin stuff you know it's very rewarding uh, mm. intellectually um and then also being able to uh, be on the forefront of technology is very rewarding because um mm. uh, you're creating stuff which no one else has ever created and you're creating functionality no one else has ever created which is amazing you know you'll be mm. in history books um but then when it comes to kind of monetary reward obviously you know there's not that many people using services out there some people manage to m make a, an okay income out of some of their projects you know like satoshi's place mm. or something but generally you know it's um it's for posterity isn't it and and future uh stuff uh why we so what 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 brought you to bitcoin uh developing on lightning network and mm. uh yeah yeah how, how did you get here all right so there's a couple questions in there uh i'll answer the first one uh what brought me to bitcoin uh we, um, should, we, should we stop the screen share first so we can see us both is that possible yeah yeah sure sure i'll cancel that one on. uh brought, brought me to bitcoin first thing that brought me to bitcoin was the a friend recommended me in 2017 uh to get into ethereum uh, i picked up some ethereum and then i went through like uh, a really really big sort of all crypto. I went through a shit coiner phase in 2017, 2018, um, sort of attracted by the money aspect of it. Um, and then in 2018, uh, you know, shit coin apocalypse, they all, they all went to shit, right? But yeah. uh, I still had plenty of BTC. So I was, was intellectually. Uh, plenty of satoshi you didn't have any btc you had you had a yeah, fraction yeah 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 good offset right good offset <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so the lightning stuff started to appeal to me i think when there was that first lightning hackathon that was hosted by jeff Olmo in berlin i think the first uh, that might have been it. Uh, the first one that I attended was like an online one that was hosted by the guys from Blockfuse. Oh yeah, no, I think that may have preceded it actually. Yeah, they they were hosting like this online hackathon. I was like, oh yeah, this this that's kind of cool. I mean, I mean the Twitter personalities that I would follow. They they were hyping up this uh, conference and they were sort of talking about exciting things that you could achieve on Lightning. So I, yeah, I jumped. I watched that hackathon. I didn't attend that one but I didn't, I didn't participate in that hackathon. But I watched some of the entries in that and that sort of inspired me to take a bit more of a look at look into it more seriously myself. And then there was the Bitcoin 2019, Bitcoin 2019 conference hackathon that I then decided to like start coding for something for that. I didn't get enough time to finish Lightning Gifts for it, mm. for that, but I ended up you know, still putting the effort uh, to finish it after the conference, uh, after the hackathon had finished to go through with it. But yeah, I guess it was like that, that first hackathon that I saw for it. I just thought, this is really cool. Uh, it'd be yeah, cool to win one of those prizes. My hat goes off to, you know, to, to the, um, uh, anyone who organizes a meetup or a hack day or a hackathon or anything, uh, they really are very inspiring things and they, they, they motivate people to start getting involved and start be building stuff. Um, uh, are you going to make it to the conference in, oh yeah, you, you said you, 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 may, you may try and make it to the conference in Berlin. Um, yeah. uh, I hope you do man. Cause honestly, they're such, they're such inspiring things. Uh, and it should be, it should be great. It should be a great conference. Uh, and there'll be a good like hacking vibe there. Um, mm. yeah, like if, um, uh, if any, again, if anyone wants to get involved in building stuff, I can't recommend enough just going to a meetup or, or trying to attend some hack day or hackathon thing, just, you know, give yourself like 24, 40 hours to work on something um, and then collaborate with people as well. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great experience. Um, yeah. And uh, I think in the middle of that, I was also uh, attracted to something called Raspberry Blitz. Um, yeah, 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 man. Red, 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 that Blitz. Roll was, uh, yeah, Roots Roll was behind. I think I, the first one I built was like uh, a 0 0.97 mm -hmm. or 9.8 version. You're running, you're running your Blitz now. Yeah, yeah, I'm running a version 1.2 right now on a Raspberry 3. Such an important project. Like the amount of people we, because he, he has no idea of how many people are actually running the Raspberry Blitz. He's actually quite conservative yeah. in, in his calculations. He thinks it's a very small percentage of people running nodes. But I'm always bumping into people who are like, yeah, man, I'm running a Blitz. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge. If you like follow it, the GitHub repository of it, like mm -hmm. every day it's got about a couple of new issues being created in the, um, GitHub issues thing. So that means like a lot of people are interacting with it and trying to muck around with it, right? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so I had to mute it. Like, I, I subscribed to it initially, start it and everything. And then, like, later on, I was, dude, there's, like, a bajillion notifications coming from this project. Uh, slow down. Um, so it's probably really popular now, I think, that they're even starting to talk about doing touchscreen integration, which would be really cool. Yeah, and no, I'm looking forward to that, too. Um, one of the projects I was going to do was make a, a separate screen, you know, like, because um, I've got some sort of little touch screen modules and I could have one of my little, yeah. The idea being that um, your node is somewhere secured and locked down. It's nice to kind of check on your node, but you mm -hmm. don't want to have to like reveal it to the, you know, you don't have to like access it every time you want to check it. So you could have a little screen, like a uh, screen, and that could be somewhere quite public and it's okay. Um, uh, right. But then you wouldn't, just... be able, you wouldn't be able to have all the functionality in there because obviously if you give it the admin macaroon, it's as, as, as exposed as exposing your node. But I thought that'd be quite a, quite a cool little project. Um, well, then wouldn't you just like uh, give that the thing or whatever like system behind that screen? Um, yeah. You just SSH into the thing and it'll show the screen, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. You could do that. Yeah, but yeah, crikey. That's a really simple solution. Yeah, yeah. Just SSH yeah. Into, the, into the blitz and then get it to display this. Yeah, that would work lovely. Uh, but it has got touchscreen functionality. So um, uh, you can use uh, this like little VGL ESP Espresso if they now have official support for little VGL. So it could have some funky... You can manage multiple nodes, you know, you can have a whole bunch of nodes and then you press on it and uh, it starts the node and um, right on. I was speaking to the ride, the lightning guy. Uh, and uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, um, he's pretty into the idea as well. He had that idea of having uh, access to multiple nodes, having like a config, you know, with their um, macaroons and so on. Uh, so yeah, that should be good. That should be good. And I guess it would just be like a, a read, read only macaroon, you know, um, or maybe you could even use it to generate an invoice as well. Yeah, that's just for fun. Um, yeah. Yeah um because not revealing too much stuff so so yeah i know it's uh there's there's loads of projects to, to, to be built out there it's interesting as well that like you know shit coins were your on-ramp you know ethereum was your on-ramp so yeah as much as bitcoiners give bad slack to, to to the crap coins and the shit coins and the you know the altcoins um they do help bring people into into bitcoin good people like yourself who build cool stuff um so what's what's next what's the next any other projects in the pipeline or uh, uh, probably the next thing on my list was uh, getting into the LN URL stuff. I think I'll make a pull request, do a little bit better documentation for new users for LN URL. Um, nice. And yeah, probably working with Anton and the other guys behind uh, LN URL to see how we can get increase adoption for it. Yeah, sweet. Man. From what I know, uh, it'll be supported in the next version of Blue Wallet. So yeah, that's good. Now, if other wallets start supporting it too, then Ellen URL might be a standard, uh, which would be really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Um, uh, I think this is for me. It's kind of the way forward to have like, um, you know, when it comes to like protocol development stuff, uh, mm. that stuff can then inform protocol development. So if if it's something which needs to be sort of included on a, a lower level in the stack, you know, um, uh, so where would Ellen URL sort of sit? So it's it's a service which something which sits on top of your node is it or it's not something which mm, so for it depends on who you are if you're a wallet then your implementation is a little bit different to a LN, lsp a lightning service provider so i can't speak exactly to how the implementation is done for a wallet but a, a lightning service provider you basically just create an additional endpoint um, that performs the same sort of functionality. So in my implementation has your existing stuff, but uh, has a different route to it, right? So for my stuff, I just have an additional route, LN URL route that performs the same redeem functionality as my redeem endpoint. I see. But it's a little bit tuned to display error messages in the format or the LN, the LN URL protocol format. For the Lightning Wallet providers, they or the Lightning Wallet maintainers, they then have to create uh, just the to read the scan after they scan the U, the the QR code to read the JSON response that it gives back with like the callback um, and what type of LN URL it is because you can have an LN URL that will create a channel. Mm in bound liquidity and you can have a LN URL that will perform a withdrawal. Oh, and sweet. Yeah. So they just create the UI to be able to facilitate that process for mm. an LN URL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's um uh I remember ages ago like 
I was in talking to the Zap guys about um, uh, just implementing like a basic get request in in their wallet. So if if um, if there was a, if they scanned a QR, which was a URL, it would go mm. and check the URL, and if it brought back like a Lightning invoice, it would then process the invoice as it would normally process an invoice. So I thought it'd be quite a cool way to have like so you'd have a static QR. Mm. It's actually my friend George's idea. Have a static QR, and then you could just keep you know paying it basically for 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 a set amount, and then have the server then just generate new invoices and throw those. Yeah, yeah. So a, a repeatable invoice. Yeah, generator, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, uh, so that functionality, it's kind of it's delicate, right? Because you're performing like a monetary function, right? Like you're someone's transferring money. So it's the LN URL spec is is built in a way that it still gives the user some sort of uh, notification of what this LN URL that they've just scanned is going to do. Um, yeah. It doesn't just automatically do it. Yeah, I see. That's quite crucial in this, in the, like I think in maintaining the user experience without the user experience being kind of scammy because yeah, you know, it, yeah. is, it is real money at the end of the day, right? And people oh, yeah, you know, the of, factors too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, people don't really want like the idea of just like a QR code accidentally being scanned and then some functions performing on the wallet there needs to be some well this was it i mean i imagine you'd have to have some sort of you know make sure that it's actually a lightning invoice in there but i mean i'm, I'm sure it does you know still open up attack vectors the fact that you're just scanning this random you know you yeah. are any old website server yeah the ln url is also the way they're set up is they have a fallback to them as well. So if someone scans the LN a QR code, like an LN URL compatible QR code, then it'll still take it. So if you scan for the QR code that I have for a Lightning Gifts, if you mm. create a Lightning Gift, you'll get a QR code that you can then pass to your recipient. And if they scan that QR code without having a LN URL compatible wallet, they just scan it for regular QR code reader, it'll still take them to the redeem page of Lightning Gifts. Mm. But if they have a Lightning and LN URL compatible wallet, they scan it with that, then there's a query parameter in that in the encoded URL that'll perform the LN URL protocol functionality. Wow, man. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite complicated stuff, but it's... Um, yeah, it's, it is. It is. It's, trust me, it took me... When, when Anton and Fiat Jaff told me about it, it took me like a week to wrap my head around it. Yeah, you sent, me the, you sent me the GitHub and I was like, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's, wrong so, with that's why, why can't I get my head exactly. on this? <laughs> that's exactly the thing that I want to work on. I want to make the yeah. the readme a bit more understandable, so that people that don't fall into the same trap as me. And just I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably have to watch this um, watch this uh, one uh, over. I think I'm gonna. I tell you what, we could do for a bit of fun as well. We could, in this video, I could put. Um, can I pay a gift, and then somebody could then redeem that gift and and get the money so could i do that on on the video now is that possible yeah yeah sure i could do that couldn't i so how much shall i how much shall i like a giveaway like a, a cash giveaway inside the video that's pretty good fun. Uh, a million stats a million um i've got so how much how much shall i do like ten dollars do like ten dollars couldn't i what's ten dollars uh, i don't know i think it's like ninety five thousand. okay all right i'll create a gift for you so I'll do it. Can I do it through your sharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the plan, right? Um, so how work. many Satoshis? Would you Let's do, do 95,000 Satoshis. This might be the biggest gift on Lightning Gifts yet so far. Yay. <laughs> All right. There's your QR code. Okay. So now I've got to scan that QR code on my crappy camera, which probably won't scan it. Yep. Oh, it did. Boom. 95,000. Yeah. So pay. Oh, not enough balance. Make sure you have at least 1% oh, for potential fees. Ah, oh, damn it. I'm sort of emptying a wallet. I'll tell you what, I'll let me use a different wallet. I'll use a different wallet. All right, cool. Um, time. I tried Wallet Satoshi. Wallet Satoshi was like bugging out the last time I tried to use it, which was a pain in the ass because I'd recommended it to loads of people because it's got the little box. Mm. Uh, oh, is Wallet of Satoshi made by the same guy that does Satoshi's room? I'm not sure. Of room oh, there we are. Payment sent. Okay. Payment sent. All right. Ah! Yeah. Cool. Payment received. Right, okay. So how do we display that to the viewers now so they can they can scan it? All right. Uh, I'll zoom in on this QR code so the viewers can get yeah. that so, so what do they need to do with that QR code? So if that this QR code, all they've got to do is get a 
Bitcoin Lightning Wallet, the Android app. If you don't have the uh, access to the Android to an Android phone, you can use LNTX bot, which is a Telegram bot. Yeah. Uh, scan in the QR code, and you'll be able to redeem the ninety-five thousand Satoshi Lightning gift. That's cool. I love that. Um, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to rip it off before I publish the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I apologize if someone scans it and yeah, he's ripped it. Well, I'll put it on Twitter. Um, all right, cool, man. Uh, that was great. Uh, that's a nice, that's a nice, somewhere, that's quite a nice uh, point to end on, I think. Thank you so much for kicking off this series. Um, it's probably worth mentioning as well to the audience that we have actually tried to record this show previously and um, uh, we failed because of some technical difficulties. So I'm, I'm so glad that you agreed to come back on. Um, <laughs> I wish you all luck in the world on your projects and uh, hopefully I'll see you at the, the conference, man, in Berlin. Yeah, we'll see you there. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thanks so much.